Yo, what's up, Lady with Budget Monk, and welcome to a new video here. I wanted to do a more elaborate video, sort of similar to this in the future, probably something like an in depth kind of uh, idea tier list. But uh, earlier in the stream, I was talking about something, and I thought I'd make a, a quick YouTube video in that regard. And basically, it's the concept of what I call, in quotations, a gap closer. And a gap closer, for example, would be like the 25% annexation cost reduction from influence. So that is something like a flat bonus from an idea group, which therefore obviously allows you to sort of, in general, you should be expanding with your admin and expanding via diplomacy, whether it's diplo vassalizing nations, feeding your vassals, hopefully potentially PUing big nations, feeding them. And then this basically closes the gap on what is a limiting factor, uh, the point cost and the time at which it's going to take to annex those subjects. So the other clearest example of a gap closer is like the admin efficiency adaptability, uh, CCR. This is, um, or admin ideas, I meant I said admin efficiency. This is, you know, a clear gap closer, reducing the cost and uh, time that it takes to core. So in, in reference, uh, I came up with this kind of concept in my head of a gap closer, what a gap closes, what can be justified as being a gap closer. And, uh, you know, I used to have this mentality as to uh, what a good idea groups. And then this thought process a long time ago, that was when I was a noob, you know, so you would take like economic because it's extremely powerful. Nobody would suggest that economic isn't extremely powerful, uh, particularly now in the meta of the game. You actually benefit much more, I would debate, than previously in the past from actually having money at all. And uh, Hungary, for example, let's say, or even Bohemia, but let's say Hungary has tons of uh, easily developed land, um, you know, a decent amount of uh, provinces, particularly if you expand to invest into something like economic can just be so beneficial playing a nation like that um, but then going back to my philosophy i had this kind of thought process what if you did not take economic and just set out to achieve what you wanted to achieve anyway without economic and therefore you take for example administrative ideas because it has a gap closer allowing you to reach those uh, goals, like a world conquest, um, more efficiently for admin points and more efficiently in terms of time, because this reduces the time it takes to core. So in other words, even though economic is so powerful or, or innovativeness, for example, which nobody would debate, um, I had this mentality of what if I take administrative instead, um, religious for a CB, administrative, and essentially... I now, that uh, that mentality or that thought process of a gap closer is what rules my life now, essentially doing these extremely hard challenges. So I actually struggle to suggest that anything is better than these gap closers. And of course, you will notice, for example, we have war score cost reduction from diplomatic. Uh, you could argue, it, it depends how elaborate you want to be with a gap closer, but uh, certainly, if you are not in a position where you are actually ignoring aggressive expansion, then aggressive expansion is also a limiting factor. And so something as simple as the day's fault CB actually reduces aggressive expansion, believe it or not, even, you know, against Muslims or, or you know, not just Christians. Uh, it just straight up reduces aggressive expansion. So Reduced AE can definitely, particularly early on, be justified as being a gap closer. Uh, but you, the CB is necessary to expand the uh, reduced diplo annexation cost. Uh, the policy for reduced annexation cost between administrative and influence, which are both gap closers in of themselves. So this is the kind of exclusive mentality that I would actually use. And to the extent to which that I consider siege ability which reduces the time at which that your armies sit on provinces as you siege to also be a gap closer. So if you have a very powerful nation, and you know in this case we're, we're kind of too powerful, but let's say you know a huge portion of Europe, and you take the same nation, one of them has uh, offensive ideas, and one of them has 
um, quantity ideas, you will find that quant the quantity nation is dramatically more powerful and can go above and beyond in terms of its uh, reach or the depths of its uh, manpower pool compared to the offensive. But I had this mentality, well, what if we just don't do it with quantity? You know, quantity is better, but what if we just don't do it with quantity and instead use the siege ability? And this, by stacking siege ability, you know, I had as much professionalism as I, unfortunately, I had to slacken standards to keep this uh, game going. Uh, the military hegemon, 20% siege ability, these sorts of things, we have over 50% increased siege ability. Uh, which is really, really, really nice. But we wouldn't have that much if we didn't go for offensive. So certainly, there. if you are unable to win wars, if you do run out of manpower, if you are unable to actually defeat your opponents and uh, when you're waiting for your cores to finish, you have not actually won uh, the next war. If you're struggling in this sense, then there's two things you should be asking yourself. At that point, do I wish I had ideas like quantity because they would enable me to do that? Or am I just, you know, not playing and performing as much as I potentially could be? Those are the kind of things you want to think about. And if you are, as a general rule, able to expand and to play and to expand back to back to back without those ideas, then how can you honestly suggest that the siege ability isn't better? You know, this is the kind of mentality that I adopted. I consider that kind of philosophy to be the gap-closing philosophy, in quotations. And that is what has had the best results for me in the kind of evolution of my gameplay and allowed me to actually make runs such as this run here, beginning as Bohemia, and going for a one tag, one faith, and one Roman is the lost culture of Rome on very hard difficulty with no exploits, including no diplo banking. Uh, an actual kind of realistic possibility. Uh, speaking of which, for people who actually care, we're dawning coming to the end of my run over here on my stream. And I won't be streaming tomorrow, but I will be going onwards throughout the week. And uh, it seems that this is sort of a throwback to a couple months ago doing it as Hungary, but in this time we're in a better position overall, and it's looking really, really good, guys, that we will finally get this uh, achieved. And as far as I know, it's not really been done before. So if you guys are keen to actually watch that conclusion, make sure to come over on Twitch and watch me throughout the course of next week, beginning on the weekend. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.